Amrita here and you're watching Simulink tutorial. I know I haven't uploaded videos for past one year. I was busy with some other stuff. Um, I also saw requests for videos on topic like mill, sill and other embedded topics as well. Uh, sorry, I could not work on those videos and upload them at that time. But I think I'll make and upload videos now consistently. And also I have made few of the subscribers last year and also in past few days. So thank you for your appreciation and it means a lot. And apart from that now the videos. So the content that I will be coming up with will be related to the stuff that I have learned in past one or two years and the blogs of course. And uh, also I will be making videos on the topics which I have already covered uh, due to sound quality issues because at that time I was not sure whether I will be continuing this or not but uh, yes I will be making those videos again uh, but those videos will not be in much depth the way they were covered earlier but yes it will provide sufficient information and also I will be making videos on the questions they ask in embedded interviews so the point here to note is that they will not cover questions related to control theory or signals and systems or autosar canopy canoe canalizer related questions so this will be completely based on simulink and how to design logic in simulink so i hope you all are safe at home and let's start with today's video so in today's video, we are going to see the questions and answers for the questions which are asked in MBD interview. So as I mentioned earlier, this question set will not contain any control theory or signals and system related questions. This will be completely Simulink questions. So the first question is why to use Simulink over other development tools? So you should know why to go for Simulink in the first place instead of other development tools right so the there are three reasons and the last one is my favorite one so the first reason is same environment for development and testing so you don't have to switch between tools to test your software so you develop the model and instead of generating code and testing it in some other environment or actually building the code and flashing it on hardware you first write mill test cases in signal builder or some people prefer writing them in excel sheet and then they import those test vectors in signal builder so mill testing so due to this you resolve issues related to software in the initial development of the software so when you go for actually hardware testing at that time most of the issues which are found are related to hardware or related to configuration but the software or logic related issues get resolved in initial development stage so same environment for development and testing then the second reason is auto code generation so you don't have to write or type code manually you just get to focus on the logic and due to auto code generation it generates a standard code so the coding which varies person to person that is avoided and also you don't have to bother about tabs and spaces the way Richard Hendels did well jokes apart uh, this code generation so you get to select the target language compiler the language in which you want to compile your code so auto code generation then the third reason is graphical design because visualization of logic is better than reading thousand lines of code so you just easily understand what the logic is doing so just to summarize three reasons same environment for development and testing which leads to resolving logic software related issues in the initial development stage auto code generation and graphical design so the second question is when to use Simulink and when to use Stateflow. So you should know while designing a logic 
when you should prefer simulink and when you should prefer straight flow so simulink is mostly for mathematical equation or instantaneous operation on the signal so you feed the signal and perform some operations on it and get the output but whereas the straight flow the straight diagram is for event driven implementations where you wait for certain conditions to occur and then take some action related to the output so if we look at this example it is just a logic for momentary switch so initially of course the output will be zero and if the switch state changes from 0 to 1 so for that the switch input if it has changed from false and it will go to 1 true value then it will go to mode 1 now it will stay in that mode as long as there is no other transition so again when the switch state changes it will go to mode 2 and then of course off so in this logic we are not changing the output continuously but we are waiting for some event whereas in this example we are continuously monitoring this uh, input and taking some action based on that so simulink is for mathematical equation and instantaneous operation whereas the state flow is for event driven logic also if you have if else logic and if it contains so many else parts then it's easier to implement in straight flow with flow chart than using so many switch blocks or if and action subsystem using simulink so moving on to the next question the third question is what is solver so solver are numerical methods to solve an equation so your model is tra treated as an equation and this solver helps to give you the approximate output for your model. There are main two types of solver that is fixed and variable. So variable solver takes variable steps to solve the equation of model whereas fixed step solver it takes fixed interval of time step now the interviewer may ask which one to use for real time application and the answer is fixed step why because if you flash your software on a controller your controller will be operating at a particular frequency it cannot magically change as per the rate of change of your signal so all real time application we need to use fixed step solver and the second reason is just for experiment purpose try to generate code for a model with variable step solver and let me know if you can do it in the comment section below so these main two types have again subset and if you remember maths these were the numerical methods so the solver is just basically a numerical method okay so moving on to the next question what is the difference between sample time and execution time so execution time is the total time for which your simulation runs so in this case your start time is 0 stop time is 10 so the execution time is total 10 seconds whereas if you see this fixed type size is 0.001 that is 1 millisecond so this is sample time for this model so if you are running a mill test case depending on your test case this execution time will vary it could be 10 second 5 second 20 second it's up to you but the sample time for this model will remain constant because you know at what rate this function should be called or it should update its value well this is the sample time for this model what about the sample time which is written on a block which is this one so on some blocks you might have seen sample time is equal to minus one what does it mean can you run your model at minus one sample time no it means that inherit the sample time so simulink determines the best sample time for the block based on the block context within the model so i'll share one link 
in the description below where you can find how this sample time may vary based on the context so that's the difference between sample time and execution time so sample time will always be the smallest entity whereas the execution time can be equal to sample time or greater than the sample time so it is the execution time whereas the sample time is the rate at which the block should update its value so i hope you are clear about the four questions that we discussed today i'll come up with new questions in my next video so that's all for this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up and keep watching and keep learning